Uh, so <laughs> feel free to uh, engage as much as possible. Uh, so we're going to start about uh, the basic stuff regarding economics, regarding free markets. Does anyone want to uh, explain what does free markets mean, like in general? What are some characteristics of free market economy? Yes. Uh, we will have the right to sell and pay without any restrictions. Yeah, without as little restriction as possible. What else? Uh, the government will intervene as uh, as much as it can. Within the actually. Yeah. And the. Uh, Selling and the buying process. Yeah. So the, the government uh, intervention will be like the minimum as uh, as little as possible. What else? People should be free to engage in uh, economic activities. Government should intervene as little as possible. What else? No taxes. No. Lower taxes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What else? No sanctions on prices, for example. Yeah. So no protectionism, like. Uh, uh, no import tariffs and things like like uh, import tariffs to reduce like your no no products guarantees no products sorry products guarantees mm. guarantees on products yeah, we buy it. it's not necessarily linked to it I mean I mean like uh, theoretically like in the the purest form probably yes but like generally like in practice not necessarily what else yeah too. How the prices uh, are formed? Can you explain? Um, By supply and demand. Yeah, well, what does it mean? Well, also competition, because like when you have more than one uh, producer, then you can play with the uh, prices. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how, like, uh, can, uh, does anyone want to explain like fully how uh, the supply and demand and how competition works? Yeah. Um, the the increase in supply um, results in of the uh, prices, <laughs> prices, uh, prices. Um, and vice versa. Yeah. So if we have like more goods to sell, we need to drop prices, right? Yeah. And like if more people want to buy it, then probably we can sell this for more yeah. prices. Yeah. And the competition means like in the free market economy, everyone should be able to access the market. Like every, it, would be, it should be relatively easy to start uh, uh, to make a company or to start a business and therefore like it's we should have a competition on different actors and therefore like when they compete uh, it means that the prices are reduced right so people have uh, access for cheaper products also more quality products right uh, uh, etc okay anyone else uh, would like to add something regarding the uh,
So, um, okay, so uh, generally the idea about free market is, uh, and generally that countries should engage, uh, be engaged in free market, uh, uh, means that everyone like benefits of it the most, right? That uh, each uh, individual that uh, enters into the free market like wouldn't enter into that trade if uh, they wouldn't be beneficial up to it, right? So all uh, actors that are engaging in the trade should be beneficial uh, due to that trade. This is like uh, in theory. And now, uh, one of the critics on that is like, well, some countries are better off than the other countries in almost every way. Like, for example, uh, Germany versus uh, Eritrea, right? Uh, Germany is uh, probably more powerful than Eritrea in producing any of the products, right? They have better technology to produce both agricultural, products, but also in more industrial products, etc. What do you think? What would you be answer on, on this claim, on this critique? How would you say that still it would make sense to have a free market between two, eco two economies, even though if one is more powerful than the other in most of the aspects? The other one, uh, opportunities. More opportunities in the free market. Like, not because uh, other, other um, states or other countries have more uh, or more advanced uh, ways of selling and buying and more uh, complex. Uh, com complex uh, Just pick up, sorry, a little bit. You want me to raise my voice? Yeah. Okay. So I'm saying just to give more opportunities to the other developing uh, economically uh, countries to like be there in the free market, not only for rich or advanced um, countries. Yeah, but that's, uh, my, my question was uh, whether uh, it is in the interest of poorer countries to engage in free market, even if the other country is much more like uh, powerful in many aspects. Yeah. Yeah, because it creates international relations between these countries. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things. But in terms of uh, the true, what in terms of economy? If only the rich countries were to produce or were to, to be in the free market, it's gonna start setting prices that don't uh, match the poor country's uh, budget. But when there's poor and rich or whatever, like there's uh, weak and powerful, there's always gonna be a balance and there's always gonna be competition. And when you compete, you start getting new ideas. They might uh, create something that, that they have for cheaper prices. Yeah. And then there's, like, there's gonna be yeah. a lot of competition. Very well, very well. Yeah. I think from product wise, uh, the uh, geographical uh, place of the two countries will affect, let's say, uh, food um, and, you know, the crops. So I believe that a country like Germany uh, doesn't have um, um, some kinds of crops that might yeah. grow in arteria or yeah. like might grow organically in arteria. Yeah, so that's that yeah. will... So there are some products where Eritrea will be like more, uh, uh, let's say, more advantageous for them to produce than Germany because they couldn't simply. Uh, we have a uh, hand here and here and then we can, um, yeah. It's related to her idea because um, it's, it's more than, I'm not sure about it, but um, would it be like an advantage that uh, some, some materials that developing countries need to be producing countries uh, will be more available if we uh, went to the free market or the free market was uh, in yeah. Globally, so like the resources will be more available if the... So this will actually um, like be um, uh, an important way to achieve the sustainable development in, in developing it in, in, the, in the countries. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Good. Uh, sorry, it was you. Uh, I think there's two aspects for countries uh, in the market that they can compete in uh, quality and the cost. So uh, if they can't compete the quality, they can compete other aspects, and uh, by the time they can find uh, resources and develop their abilities to have uh, more quality, like we have China. Uh, in the fir at first, they couldn't uh, compete with technology, so they uh, they they make a products with lower cost. Yeah. Then uh, year by year, they had more quality, and now they can compete with flagships and. Yeah, excellent. So it was, uh, uh, to, to sum up all the things, uh, all the very good things that we heard so far. So it is mostly like, even if, uh, let's say Germany and uh, Bulgaria, I don't know, two countries, and let's say that Germany can produce cars better than the Bulgaria, but also they can produce some uh, lower quality uh, products better than Albania, like maybe toys or something like that. 
still, it would make sense for Germany to focus or to uh, prioritize only the car industry, right? Because if they specialize in this, they have the biggest competitive advantage compared to Bulgaria. So it is in their interest to import toys from Bulgaria, even though they could produce them better than in, Bul than in Bulgaria, because they are cheaper, because they are specialized in it. And Germany can specialize in car industry because there they will earn the more. So that's why even if uh, two countries, uh, when we have two countries, one is much better off than the others in producing many things, it still makes sense for them to enter the free market for both of them because uh, it makes sense, um, the most sense for them to specialize for the things that they are, uh, for Germany, for the things that they are best in, and for Bulgaria, the things that uh, they are the least worse uh, than Germany uh, uh, in producing, right? So this is the theory of comparative advantage. It says that two countries, uh, it always makes sense basically for two countries to enter the free market because, because due to specialization, uh, everyone is going to be uh, comparatively on, uh, on gates. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so, uh, next, second thing that we also mentioned was competition, right? Because the free market, everyone can enter uh, the free market, right, uh, with their products, and therefore because there are more people offering the same products, uh, the prices, like, or at least the uh, uh, availability of uh, products with low prices will uh, uh, will be higher. And which means quality. that, like. Even the quality each state yeah. and each country will uh, yeah. work on its uh, quality to be, to be yeah. like the best. So, quality. like, uh, uh, firstly, like for people who are like poor, uh, you can see that, for example, with uh, cell phones, right? In 1990s, like uh, very very basic cell phones were very expensive and only like business people could have them, right? Nowadays, like almost uh, like anyone uh, can get a smartphone that has so many functions, right? Uh, but also, like for people who are like richer, like uh, they have like uh, chances to buy more quality products because they are the different like uh, market for which the, the companies are competing. Now, what is the problem with competition? Do you think it's an ideal uh, scenario? Do you think that there are some flaws of the, of the competition? Yeah, um, it cause uh, huge damage to the local products on the national aspect. Mm -hmm. Can you explain how? Uh, when the local product is not protected by the government, um, it would and it would have a higher cost and lower lower um, lower quality than the one uh, imported from outside. Mm -hmm. So this would cause the industrialization in this country to be effective. Yeah. So like, uh, yeah. When uh, big companies buy uh, the other small companies, this would cause a uh, relation. How it is called when there is one uh, company that, is dominate, that dominates the market? Manipulation. Yeah, monopoly, right? Like when you have a, basically one company that dominates certain aspect of market, it's called monopoly. And what do you think are the, the problems of monopoly? Because they are able like, to, to destroy the competition. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this one uh, company can uh, sell the same product and it can dominate, uh, like, uh, have very, very high prices for, let's say, necessary things. And especially if that company uh, controls a very, very, um, you know, crucial uh, product, let's say gold or oil or something like that, uh, the price that it sets will affect the whole, uh, the whole other, pro uh, whole other products, and it can uh, perform pressure on other countries and maybe um, other companies and maybe even countries. Yeah. So it can dominate many fields mm -hmm. through this one product. Yeah. And very good total. I think with monopoly, you can't uh, really control the supply demand graph because. Um, you're just gonna set a price, and then the people have to adapt to that price, whether they like it or not. Like, there's no other choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Uh, uh, when uh, one company uh, controls the market, it won't be, uh, it won't need to uh, improve uh, their products and improve their technology because they uh, have the control over the, uh, the supply, uh, and they can crash any. Try to create another company or to create a competition. Yeah, very good. Um, um, sometimes yeah. uh, they use information uh, to dominate uh, other fields. Like if you have uh, an algorithm or a secret uh, key for something, so if you keep this information for you, this will uh, make uh, other people uh, not able to do the same product. Yeah, 
So yeah, it is more like the issue of like patents, right? But like they also expire after some time, and like uh, and generally like the pros of patents are like the incentivize people who work uh, the, to get uh, who work in the research and development uh, to work there because that is the way for them to get compensation for for their new products, right? Well, um, so far we talked about um, like what's bad about monopoly, but we didn't say what's bad about yeah, yeah. No, but yeah, that's the issue. No, nothing is bad about competition. I mean, what is bad when there is a, uh, with free market and competition? Because sometimes in the free market, one company can be dominant by the truth through starting position that was beneficial. For example, like Google, right, was a very popular search engine that now just dominates. It's very difficult to compete with it, right? Or like Walmart uh, in. Uh, uh, in the United States, mostly with uh, with uh, uh, with um, basically retail of, of most of the products. But so the thing is that sometimes uh, certain like uh, differences uh, at the beginning can change uh, can make that one company dominates the market. Then we have a monopoly. That means that free market uh, doesn't always lead to competition, but rather leads sometimes to the suboptimal uh, suboptimal just a second suboptimal scenarios. And uh, in those scenarios, it is very uh, we don't have a real competition because one company dominates the market. So, for example, if you are producing some agricultural uh, agricultural products like vegetables or fruits, for example, in the United States, most likely uh, your biggest chances to sell it is to sell it to Walmart because they have basically the monopoly of buying of th those things, which means that they can uh, set very low prices and basically you, as a, an individual who is selling those vegetables. To, to Walmart earns uh, very, very little. And given that there is no true competition there, and this is something that can happen in the free market, this is a problem of, uh, of free market, uh, it can be prob uh, problematic uh, because uh, uh, in the future, like we have a suboptimal, uh, uh, suboptimal scenarios. So it's not problem that uh, this is not a problem of competition. It's not a problem uh, of competition like in itself, but rather problem of free market that leads to the scenario where we don't have a true competition. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, I might say that this problem can be can uh, like the people or the customers can control this problem. Like uh, many uh, big companies can be wiped by profit, uh, and then and many local ones can be you know. Uh, endorsed and that's why we can raise the amount of uh, competition between them uh, also what we talked about is like shark investments where uh, those local companies are being invested or dominated by big companies through investments like what happened with uber and Kareem recently they kept their names but uh, and they kept their uh, like local names and like, the whole company but it's not a competition in it it's, uh, it's like having water in two different uh, yeah. yeah, It's all something that happens. It happens uh, especially with like internet providers, for example, that they simply, simply separate the land and say like, yeah. I will, sa uh, I will uh, provide internet in this part of Belgrade, you will provide in this part of Belgrade. And we don't have competition because you as an individual customer cannot actually choose, but rather you just are assigned <laughs> by random lottery who can provide the internet there. So actually, even though we have more corporations, it can happen if you don't have the true competition. Um, can good. I ask about something? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is the free market always about products or it can be also about services? Yeah, it can be about services. I mean, about everything. Yeah. Because um, yeah, in, in, in our country, for example, um, we have some certain services that can be provided only for one by one company or two companies. So when you want to sign an, um, uh, a contract with this company, they, their terms always are uh, are the terms that applies to the contract because you have no choice either this or this yeah. so um, if, if we like entered a free uh, market would it yeah, 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 could it be that there are companies that give services like let's say uh, electricity electricity services water services things like this connection services like Joel yeah yeah no, it, it can be it also applies to those kind of services Electricity is a bit specific because it's something that like everyone needs, and usually yeah. it is like uh, provided and uh, run completely by state. Oh. Uh, but like it depends, like uh, from case to case, and like I think that there are lots of uh, fair critiques uh, of uh, having uh, private uh, privatized uh, electricity and water supply, etc. Because those are things that everyone needs, and therefore like 
uh, companies can dictate higher prices. And on the other hand, state is to some extent uh, like uh, usually elected and therefore like uh, yeah. uh, care about uh, their workers and don't like just in, uh, inflate the prices. So I guess this isn't necessarily a dichotomy between having like total free market, you can charge whatever you like as a monopoly price, yeah. or between having just the state providing it. You can also have highly regulated free markets mm -hmm. or fusions between them because the reality tends to be that the states are ineffective, the pure free markets are also very problematic in various ways. And the question is how you build an effective institution. Yeah. And the, the extremes don't necessarily work, you know, and people sometimes find what's more effective is some fusion. No, yeah. As a compliment of what you said, uh, if I am Palestinian and I just pay for the, the electricity company, which we all know that um, in, in Palestine in general, uh, it, have, uh, it provides high prices for, uh, we pay high prices as a, in exchange for the electricity. So if the free market would uh, provide me with, uh, with, with electricity services with less like paid, less to get paid, it will be more better for me as an individual. I think that's very good, but it'd be possible to argue that it's a natural monopoly in electricity, which is to say, oh. unless you're going to build two different sets of power stations yeah. and electricity but, wires but, going to every house, it's difficult to see how it's competition. But Palestine's contribution is uh, we're under occupation and the yeah. electricity is controlled by the occupation, so really there's nothing you can do. And I think every, everything here is not a free market because it needs permits from yeah. two different sides, not even one. Yeah. So I don't think any example of free market will applied or argued. This is, I guess, quite an expensive country generally, so perhaps that's one of the reasons why, just because it's not sufficiently free market, like because tax, it's stupid like habits. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also, like, just to uh, address what Otavi told you, like, of course, like, nothing is, usually nothing is, like, completely state-run on the completely yeah. free market. But just in terms of debating, be aware of that, like, of course, you can sometimes make a caveat and say, we're going to regulate market in these certain ways. However, each regulation usually reduces the benefits of free market in terms of like, it makes free market more like, look like the, the state run in some aspects. So be aware of that in terms of like, uh, that sometimes you might uh, make those restrictions so much that you don't have many benefits of the free markets, right? If prices are, are, are like regulated, if, uh, if many things are regulated like that, then probably we don't have a truly free market and competition and some of the benefits that generally people stand for that. Well, okay. uh, are there any countries with like true free markets, like complete free markets? The US is fairly close. Yeah, yeah. close, okay. Is, it, is China a some free market? Yeah. China is very complicated yeah. because yeah. It's, they have state-owned companies, but they're de facto competing with each other. Yeah. So it varies by sector and by region. China also has the worst of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. of both worlds, I think. <laughs> Depending on what you yeah. know, you could also argue it was the best of both worlds. Yeah. yeah. Depends, yeah. Um, is, 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 uh, um, are cheap products an indicator of uh, cheap uh, of free market? Not necessarily, but potentially. Sometimes they can subsidize to a large extent certain products, and therefore they are cheap for uh, customers. But I mean, they're not cheap because everyone pays through taxes to, for them. But generally, like sometimes, like for example, during 1990s, uh, bread in Serbia was the cheapest in the world, and it was largely uh, subsidized by, by the state. It was not free market at all. I mean, because. <laughs> but on, on the other hand, a Serbian friend of ours, Siri's dad, made a lot of money um, smuggling things from Bulgaria into yeah. Serbia um, because there were sanctions. So there was the opposite of a free market, yeah. and then. When, when he got them into Serbia, he could sell them at like five or six times the price. Almost everyone would do that in the country. <laughs> okay, um, so. Uh, Can I ask a question? Yeah. What about international companies and the free markets? Do they benefit from free market or yeah. what? International companies mostly benefit, like the bigger companies like yeah. usually benefit from the free market. Usually the problem of, uh, of free market is for the local uh, companies, companies, state companies, because usually it's very difficult for them to compete with huge yeah. internationals, with MNCs, yeah. like multinational corporations, because so usually controls? they have much more resources. Uh, secondly, they can uh, they have better technology, right? Yeah. And they can uh, uh, they're more likely to, to invest in research and development, makes better products, etc. Thirdly, uh, they have lots of uh, like uh, 
uh, they can simply sell you products uh, for cheaper price for certain amount of time, so-called dumping. Right? Uh, uh, and then uh, simply uh, uh, the competition runs out of game, and then they uh, remain only and dictate the price. Who so usually MNCs, uh, uh, sorry? Who controls all of this? Well, is that like any... Who choose the whether you want free market or the rules. Yeah, like well, the rules. so there are some rules Countries, that are set by, uh, by World Bank oh, and yeah. like uh, like some international organization, but okay. mostly it is like the states who dictate like the laws and how it is done. But also states are influenced by the other states and uh, so it is not very, it is very complicated scenario. Also the people of the state too, like yeah. they have a state demand. Yeah. There's an institution called the World Trade Organization, which is the WTO, which facilitates negotiation by states about how free their markets are going to be and whether they allow other countries, companies to access their markets. Because the other way you can have unfree markets is if you have tariffs on stuff going in and out of your country. So let's say that you didn't want like Jordanian tomatoes to destroy your indigenous broodly produced tomatoes. I don't know if you produce tomatoes, forgive me if you don't. Um, you could put tariffs on Jordanian tomatoes and then they will be much more expensive yeah, and your local ones will be competitive. Thank you. It's, it's, a very, it's a very complicated relation, especially because people, like, of course, people have something in this, but, like, generally people are not very, very like, every citizen not very well educated regarding economy. Yeah. And secondly, like, when people vote, usually they vote for one or two issues, which, like, affects them the most. And, like, some, like, Specific like protectionism policies, etc., are rarely like in some countries they are. I mean, like uh, I think in the U.S. there is like a reasonable amount of people who who vote uh, because of that, etc. But like in like mostly like uh, developing countries, I think it's rarely uh, one of the biggest uh, so, like um, incentive for people to vote. Yeah. According to what you previously said, so uh, a country can regulate according to some uh, yeah, instructions from different uh, international institutions. Uh, the, the free market that it enters. So uh, if, if, if one country can uh, can say like, I don't want uh, the products of the country X to enter my my, uh, my free country, my free uh, market, uh, can it say like, I don't want this product to be provided in my free market? Like to, to avoid one product to enter the free market. Yeah. You, usually it's regulated by, uh, by WTO and uh, like, it depends, I mean, from the specific products to these specific countries and like the geopolitical general uh, uh, situation. I mean, sometimes there are some risk, like uh, there are some uh, like sneaky ways to have a protectionism. So, for example, like if you want to export water to uh, like uh, water to some uh, countries, then you can say, look. Uh, uh, we have these regulations that just prohibit water with the, like uh, this amount of these minerals, etc. And that's why you effectively like prohibit, uh, uh, like make the protectionism, even though it's just uh, yeah. uh, okay. it, it's not uh, not allowed. So it, it's very it, it's very like context dependent. I, would yeah. say. I guess the most recent example is the U.S. and placing tariffs on China and also yes. on Mexico, etc. So you saw maybe last week. They, they were threatening to place tariffs on Mexico if the number of unregistered migrants didn't decrease oh, yeah. and this sort of thing. So it's a kind of tool of political leverage. Mm -hmm. But also they have higher tar tariffs on uh, Mexican produced cars because previously everyone was moving their car production from Chicago and Detroit into Mexico mm -hmm. uh, because Mexicans are just like half the price of an American. So it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but then the US puts a 50% tariff on exports from cars from Mexico so then US cars are competitive again. Mm -hmm. I guess maybe the other thing to say here is different countries have different regulation. Yeah. So uh, it's massively expensive if you're a company which is based in the UAE, but you want to do business across the entire rest of the Gulf. And like Bahrain, Qatar, Oman, Kuwait, etc., they all have different regulations. You have to make a slightly different product. So regulation functions as a form of protectionism because it makes it expensive to access markets because you have to change your products, change what you're complying with. So. I guess I'm interested in the EU. So one of the things about the EU is it has a single market, so all the regulations are the same. And there are no tariffs between things, so it's very easy to trade um, and move things about expenses. So it's good for the economy because it means businesses can move stuff around easily and cheaply. And you have a single integrated trade zone. So there's this move towards larger and larger trade blocks, like the, um, the Asia Pacific block, which is called... What's that? Yeah, no. Maybe ASEAN, but the US one. 
Exactly. So if, if you are a Slovakian car maker um, and you want to sell your car in Austria, you, you literally, you just drive it to Austria and don't have to think about it. Um, but now for real, it's going to change. Some... Exactly. And it's potentially a grave problem. So car manufacturing in the UK has um, been falling every single quarter, so every three months, for 11 quarters consecutively. consecutively. Um, so for like three years. And in the last three months, car manufacturing in the UK is down 45%, um, and it would be falling before that. So, the, you know, the UK is kind of finished, is that, uh, unfortunately. Is that an impact of Britain? Exactly. Because you're a British car manufacturer, and you think you want to sell your car to Ilya, so you can drive around Belgrade. Um, but you can't anymore because Brexit, so it gets more complicated. But, but, but isn't, isn't, it, isn't it also vice versa? So the people of UK need cars. So why is it is it hard for them to get cars from Germany? Um, so I think it's more complicated to make cars if you're coming to because you also ex import the things you make the cars with. Yeah. Because the UK doesn't produce anything. So if it's just importing a car, maybe it's a bit more expensive for the British consumer who wants I want to buy my car, it gets more expensive. But if you're trying to make a car and you want to buy like car parts from like seven or eight different countries yeah. and all of them you need to fill out a hundred forms because the UK is in the civil market you go, oh man, I think I'll move to Italy, or, or something like this, because just it's too much effort. Um, and businesses dislike uncertainty, so Brexit freaks people out, not just because it's bad, but also because they don't know what's going to happen. Um, so they, they want to run away from, from the, the, the manufacturing. So the, cons the consumption of cars in the UK by the UK residents, did it fall down? or? They didn't even manufacture, so their market isn't UK residents. So I think their market is abroad, but they also need to be able to import things to be able to make them. Um, we, we've somewhat reached the edge of my knowledge of British automobile manufacturing, oh. um, <laughs> for which apologies. Uh, but I think you're probably right. Yeah. Okay. Um, can we proceed with the, with the free market? Um, anyway. Uh, so I think that we uh, like uh, came across most of the things that are like beneficial and also harmful regarding the free market. Something that I would like also to, uh, to say is usually research uh, and development. It is when you have uh, uh, when uh, companies like are profit oriented, right? And when they uh, 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 when they earn a, earn a lot, then they can spend lots of that money in research and development, which makes sense for them because they make better products, which may make, make uh, later maybe them. Uh, be more successful in the market, and you especially see in many like areas, especially technology, etc. The things change a lot, right? Like Nokia phones were like uh, dominating completely the market, and uh, now not really, right? Uh, now, like uh, you can also see like the China, someone, someone mentioned already, that just started with uh, being like generally producing uh, cheap and low quality goods is now producing also uh, high tech, uh, basically products like uh, Xiaomi, Huawei, that basically now being screwed by, by, by Trump, but still like uh, all this happens due to research and development because you can, have, you, uh, uh, you can simply uh, create uh, better quality products that will be more uh, 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 be, uh, better uh, on the market, more people buy it. Okay, uh, shall we go to the next slide? Yeah, so I think that most of the things, so these are like the bad side of the free markets. Uh, some of them we, we covered already. Uh, first, it is like, like negative externalities, right? Uh, when basically, uh, like uh, maybe the people who are like, in, like the, let's say, actors who engage in the free market both benefit from that, but uh, some other actors will have uh, uh, like harms because of that. Uh, there are a couple of examples here. One is probably environmental harms, right? Because like uh, sometimes, particularly like MNCs, in developing countries where there are very, very low environmental regulations, uh, are able simply to pollute everything there and like people don't like it. Uh, probably the most used example is like Shell in Nigeria that just uh, polluted the uh, rivers, <laughs> forests, everything. And then when people were protesting, employees basically paramilitary organizations to, to protect their, their power plants. And it's very difficult because like sometimes you have a weak state, you have 
uh, state that doesn't have a strong institutions that is easily corrupted. And like when you have MNCs that are like uh, self-interested organizations with lots of money, and on the other hand, state with very weak institution that is very corrupted, usually people are screwed over. So this is like one of the problems that usually like uh, uh, negative externalities can achieve uh, this way. Um, now, uh, secondly, we have uh, the uh, problem regarding collective action problem. So does anyone know what collective action problem is? This is collective action. <laughs> yeah? Does it mean that when someone does something, the rest follow? Or it's like sort of like a group? Um, That's kind of that heart of it. There's another yeah. heart of it. Like when people like all to do something. Like a hog mentality. Can you explain? Maybe on the example? Um, an example like regarding the countries. For example, if uh, Saudi Ara if the USA was to cut ties ties with Saudi Arabia, and um, then the rest like their allies would follow suit. Is that it? Can you see this? Mm -hmm. um, is it takes a negative reaction or a negative reaction to something that happens? Yeah. So it's very difficult to have a yeah, sorry. Is it like when, when like when when there's a, a free market, there's no regulations against having allies against maybe a weaker competition. Mm, um, no, it's not it, that. It's basically it like from what I read, it's basically uh, it's good for the people altogether, but it's not good for the individual. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> basically, it is usually so. For example, you can see this. Uh, uh, in many examples, like for example with workers, right? It is very difficult, like for example, uh, people together would benefit from something, yeah. but like for each individual it seems like it's a lot of investment to, to, to fight for this, uh, etc. And therefore like collectively like you don't have, uh, you, you don't have uh, people uh, fighting for those things. Uh, that's why uh, trade unions are produced, for example, to try to minimize this asymmetry of power between between uh, basically uh, company and its workers, right? Because a single worker is easily replaceable, while like uh, uh, by the company. But if like they collectively like uh, bargain, then they have much much more power. Um, Can you give an example? Because yeah. I can't imagine it in my head. The way it's sometimes explained is yeah. everyone acts in a way which is in their individual interest, but which is against their collective interest. So the, oh, the classic okay. example. Um, is that in the UK we used to have something called common land, which is like you as a village, you all own together a field, and in this type in this field, you're all allowed to put your goats, sheep, etc. So it is all in your interest for fields to not have too many ca uh, goats, ca uh, sheep, etc. Otherwise, all the grass will be eaten, and then no one will be able to use the field. However, it is in your individual interest to put your goats and sheep there as much as possible so that you can eat as much of the grass as possible. So then you get rich because you've got better goats. Um, but if everyone does that, then there's no field yeah, left no and no one can enjoy it. Yeah. I don't get how this is applied to everyone. The general example is it's in the advantage of every single country to pollute um, because then their industries get money because they're, they're making stuff, exporting it, etc. However, if everyone pollutes, then everyone goes bankrupt. Everyone has a problem because there's global warming, huge climate change, etc. So, free market doesn't solve that problem because people are competing against each other and they don't have an incentive to look at the bigger picture, i.e., to kind of protect the field in the long term or to protect the climate. So, that there's also, it's sometimes explained as like a free rider problem, which is to say, your incentive is to be the one guy who everyone else is behaving and not putting their goats on the field, but you're the one who's, who's using the field them. constantly. Yeah. Yeah. And because everyone has that incentive, everyone loses. Yeah. And it's not only if everyone has that incentive, but rather if you don't do that, you are going to be on the loss. So for example, like uh, the other example that uh, is usually used is like fishing in international waters. But basically, if you just take too much fish, then in the future <laughs> it will be much less and like uh, you won't be able to uh, to fit fish enough. But however, if I am not going to go to fish there like so much, then some other corporations or country will go uh, and do that. And therefore, like I will be on the loss. It's not only the time competing for my own like uh, 
uh, for my own benefits, but rather if I don't act like that, probably I'll be uh, I'll be much much worse. Off. Okay. Uh, cool. Uh, let's talk about uh, uh, information symmetry. What is, uh, is the last thing? Right. <laughs> what uh, what's information symmetry? Information asymmetry. Uh, I mean, it's pretty. Yeah. It doesn't mean that this, the information that is divided is not equal in different parts of the world. Well, it, it means it basically means that like two people who are engaging in free trade don't uh, have, have the same information. information. They, yeah. they don't they have equal information, yeah. and because of that information asymmetry, people. Don't uh, enter the trade thrill, uh, the trade freely, right? So, for example, like, is it like, is it like lack of expertise? And so, uh, to a, to, a, to an extent, yeah, it is the lack of expertise, but also uh, generally, uh, uh, yeah, it is mostly the lack of, of expertise, or simply like someone is uh, in that business for a quite a long time, and you don't know like uh, all. Uh, all all the information and like even if you wanted to acquire all information that the cost of acquiring all that information probably would be higher uh, than that which uh, which sometimes means that people enter into trade without uh, uh, like not truly really, but simply under under the false like information that they have right uh, but how is that fixed in normal well, uh, it could be, for example, fixed by state having a regulation that will simply uh, force uh, uh, force entities to provide the relevant information to consumers mm -hmm. that, uh, that that will exist there. Like you can get like all the Especially, for example, with marketing, that the problem can exist because lots of times uh, corporations can hide, like uh, when uh, companies uh, 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 try to advertise a product. They can simply like skew the way how they present uh, uh, that product or hide certain information, and basically, like you as a consumer who is buying, has a completely different picture uh, uh, of that. And for yeah, example, state could uh, intervene by simply regulating marketing by forcing corporations to disclose certain information in certain way. Yeah. Uh, so therefore, that that information symmetry is reduced. Right. I guess this is mainly because of the competition of the free markets because. And it, uh, having uh, an infor uh, information asymmetry will benefit the the the, uh, the companies that have more information and more uh, uh, in expertise and all of that stuff. And I feel like if there is no uh, if there is no uh, competition between the free market, then this would be and it, the information wouldn't be like and it, other companies would not benefit from the information as much as when there is a, con uh, a competition about prices yeah. and about selling more and, and stuff. Again, it's not like necessarily like only uh, like not only extreme, but rather like uh, uh, somewhere on the spectra between the free market and like completely state uh, control uh, controlled economy. Uh, and like sometimes like there can be like a state corporation and some of the private, so you can have some competition, but also like uh, uh, and therefore like uh, regulate information symmetry uh, by the state. Shall we move on? We should maybe talk briefly about too big to fail. You've probably heard this phrase. You, has anyone heard the phrase too big to fail? Yeah. yeah. What does it mean? Uh, something is too big, uh, it's harder to make it collapse, but the fact I believe the contrary. When it's becoming a bigger, it becomes much easier to collapse because the people under it don't think in the same way. I think that's a good explanation. What specific context is it from? I think like if a certain company that's it's very big in like uh, to the economy of the country and if like it's going to go bankrupt then the government will start helping out this company so it doesn't fail. Yeah. So the specific context is maybe somebody knows the 2008 financial crisis. Mm -hmm. So you should watch the film The Big Short, um, which is a great film. I would recommend it's on Netflix. Um, and the, the idea is that. Because the banks were so structurally important to the US economy, they were de facto guaranteed by the US government. The result of which was they were able to take massive risks um, because they knew that if they went bankrupt, the US government would rescue them and they'd be okay. And if their risk went well, then they'd make lots of money. So the US government was effectively subsidizing very risky behavior because it's guaranteeing them. 
But at the same time, you can't not guarantee them and say you let them fail because if Goldman Sachs um, collapses, then the world economy goes into profound depression um, in a way which shortens people's lives and leads to massively decreased standards of living. So I guess it's an example of tragedy of the commons or moral hazard in that you have to protect these people. So it's not really a free market, but they get the win of a free market without the bad effects of a free market. So it's like kind of not badly regulated and unfair, yeah, as you say. Yeah. We're skipping them. Uh, no, no, not that one. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about economic growth. So, what is like general economic growth? Having more incomes than costs. Yeah. <laughs> and like increasing the GDP. Yeah, and what GDP? Uh, gross, gross domestic product, yeah. And how it is calculated? Um, by uh, summing the amount of, uh, I don't know what's the term. So basically, the income through gross income and the government. Like the, the gain minus uh, yeah, the cost. Uh, yeah. so, so the same yeah. reason, the can you, can you just say it yeah, so it's, it's the gain minus the cost of production. Yeah. Okay. And then, like, uh, usually it is like uh, calculated per capita uh, to just address how much uh, like people earn in general. Why does the economic growth matter? Because it makes uh, the lives more, it increases the quality of life for the for citizen in that country and makes uh, everything more stable. Mm -hmm. yes. um, and also economic growth uh, is uh, technically related to political growth too, yeah. like you're more powerful if you're economically stable. Mm -hmm. yeah. What else? It makes you dominant over Hopefully, it's good also for investors as well. If like the economy is like uh, has grown for some time, it seems it's a very like uh, good market to invest. In, so. I think it's, a, it's also a good indicator of the of, of every aspect of the country. Like it's a, it's an indicator that maybe there's no corruption or you know everything's going kind of well. Because well, the economy is power. <laughs> Sorry? Economy is power source. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think it's to a certain extent because sometimes if you surpass that power, you start actually getting attacked. To like you know like you start people wanna wanna take your economy or they wanna benefit from your economy. So I think like there's an equilibrium for everything. So. Okay. Are there other reasons why economic growth is maybe not so good or at least not the only thing? As it was. Are there other reasons why economic growth is maybe not so good or not the only thing and should it be the only thing states think about? Uh, because we, want, uh, we need to look uh, at the distribution of wage between the two. Mm -hmm. For example, it also, also be ethical, so you cannot uh, economically grow while you're like uh, taking rights. And maybe because uh, it attracts so many investors, uh, the the original the originality of the country is sometimes lost. Like in Dubai, the original residents are barely seen uh, in in the major uh, in the major cities. Yeah. And in the because usually economic growth comes um, like uh, while risking other things like uh, like environmental safety of the area yeah. and such. In Bhutan, they thought of this thing called gross national happiness. So they want to measure how happy people are instead of how much, how rich they are. Um, this kind of suits the Bhutanese because they're not very rich. Um, so they get the opportunity to present themselves to the better country. Uh, and it's also quite an odd country because it's a kind of very conservative monarchy. So they're maybe just making quite a, uh, trying to benefit themselves. But it is an interesting idea. Um, that you can measure happiness rather than economic growth. And maybe economic growth isn't like the be all and end all. And they you said the word to do. Uh, so gross gross national happiness is yeah, this yeah. upright. Can you give an example? Oh Bhutan. 
So it's um, it's a Himalayan state. It's next to India. It's kind of like Nepal. Um, so it's it's a pretty obscure country. It doesn't come up in many debates. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what are uh, what do you think? Uh, okay. So obviously, like unemployment is bad, right? Yeah. Yeah. We don't need to uh, uh, to talk about it. What do you think are the factors that lead to unemployment? Yeah. Uh, bad educational system. Bad educational system. Which uh, bad in which way? What does it mean? Bad. Uh, means like it doesn't. It does not uh, follow up the international the market need, mm -hmm. and it does not provide its uh, students uh, with uh, needed expertise. information slash expertise to yeah. use. Yeah. For example, you study the bunch of liberal arts, but in your country there is very very little number yeah. of people who can work with it. No <laughs> Sometimes it's vice versa. It's because yeah. um, in our country there's a lot of jobs that are like basic, like uh, bachelor students. But for master students, they don't hire you because like you're too good to be in this class. So yeah. like do you'd rather uh, hide your master degree and then go get yeah yeah like, yeah 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 because yeah. 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 then they'll be like oh you're gonna get like two thousand shekels like that's like nothing and so you can't. Can't put you there, friends. Uh, not I have also friends who are overqualified and unemployed because they are overqualified. So I think we have the same problem, but not to such a great extent. That's interesting <laughs> yeah. to hear. Yeah, actually, I think part of that problem is uh, because hiring uh, like people who have master degrees is, is more expensive because by law yeah. they have higher minimum wages. Yeah. So it sounds like your economy is quite regulated. Yeah, like yeah. you need permits from both the Israelis and the Palestinian it's not really authority. Really, it's restricted mainly. Yeah. But there are other problems to describe it. It's, there's also another problem that goes down to the educational system, which is that most of the companies and most of the people who hire right now are private companies who follow, let's say, international regulations. And all these things that they teach, like let's say, for example, for the IT students, they learn some things, but they have to practice other things that will have to apply to the international market. So they're not going to accept any of the graduates until unless they like start taking more and more and more courses after they graduate, which is so expensive, and so many people don't follow up to. So the university system doesn't provide the international standards yeah. despite yeah. everyone wanting them. And why is that? Just because it's conservative? Not just conservative, but just because like most of the professors who work here are professors who did learn like a really long time ago, who did not keep up to date with things that have happened. Especially the professors here, they do write down the material that they teach the students. Another thing is, I might add, is that the curriculum um, really needs um, it, like so resources and books from uh, from the world. And um, let, let's say in my university, some and some doctors are requesting those uh, uh, books and uh, have already bought them from outside, but the Israelis will not uh, yeah. won't let them yeah. get in the country. Uh -huh. So this is, yeah, this our, is one of our educational system, either either in schools or in university, is uh, highly controlled. Yeah, highly controlled by the occupation because uh, it's a firm, it's their benefits that we're not getting uh, the efficient, the most. Uh, Educated system that we can have because this will benefit us and won't benefit them. But I think, I think, uh, I think it was the We can talk about also diversity, uh, especially in our markets, like we see in our, mar uh, our markets. Uh, there are too much educated people, uh, so they get the, there's too much competition between uh, educated people. So like uh, someone said before, you need to have a master uh, a degree to have an, an, an employment or an employee. Um, but there's no too much hand worker, like just builders um, or something like that. Uh, so there's lots of diversity, too much uh, educated people, but less uh, but there is no in between. Uh, the sanctions, when they under sanctions, they can try a trade with other countries. Uh, so that will increase the unemployment and the other thing uh, that you mentioned, the capacity of the market. Uh, when the market, uh, uh, when uh, the market uh, doesn't uh, can't compete, does it have 
or in other words, when the people needs are uh, specified are and not abroad in some uh, communities, uh, you can't uh, provide them a product that they won't buy. So you won't have people working in those uh, products. So there was, uh, yeah, so two of you and then we can, yeah. Maybe one more thing um, that goes under the education system is that most uh, of our curriculum is translated. Mm -hmm. And we have so poor translation of that curriculum that there are some words that are Google translated. Mm -hmm. So we have the information cut apart, like cut from uh, the big books. Uh, uh, it loses its meaning, it loses its, rea uh, like, uh, its reality, and it loses the, the, the uh, benefits. It's, yeah, its benefit, like its relation to the, uh, to the ground. So uh, when the student gets it, doesn't, doesn't, he can't relate to it, and he can't understand it in a way that he can use it. Yeah, all of it is nonsense. It. Yeah. It strikes me that I don't know, I've met a lot of people who speak very good English. Is that just because it's very unusual and it's we're because, in a kind of atypical maybe bubble? Because you met them here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like, how unusual is this? Um, it is. I, it, it is quite unusual. I, honestly, I disagree with them because I think you always get information and education if you want to. Like you, like everyone has internet now. Everyone like has access to to a lot of PDF books. But everyone has a lot. But I think like the. the the teachers are not willing yeah. to yeah, to update themselves. Like our our teachers don't yeah. know English. Like we know English, but our teachers don't. don't know, yeah. So they like yes, they explain their problem. lesson in Arabic. So it's like it's almost like that. I think yeah. I think one of them is like the resources you you spoke about are we have a lack of them in Arabic language, and there are many initiatives that are trying to enrich that uh, those resources, especially in medicine and the scientific yeah. um, um, exactly. fields. Uh, the other thing is, I think, I think we have, uh, I think we have uh, this uh, this gap between people who are really really good at English and people who are really really bad at English. So you either meet someone who is kind of fluent, or you either meet someone who cannot say a word, mm -hmm. and the gap cannot be filled in any way. Like, That's interesting. Yeah. Why is that? Um, education I, is the main issue. Many yeah. teachers' problems, the government's problem. I also think class division, like within a Palestinian society, for example, lower class doesn't have uh, as much access to good uh, private schools and to the internet yes. as the upper class. They teach, they teach a foreign language in Arabic, and that's like the worst. Yeah. Plus, like how the education works is that we're just giving you all these words to memorize so they start to hate the language but yeah. rarely other people practice outside of school. True. Mm -hmm. What percentage of people in the West Bank are privately educated? What? Uh, a very, very, I think. No, I think there's a lot of people. What percentage of people in the West Bank are privately educated? Privately educated? Like, how much? 20? No, I guess. No, there's no, 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 more. No, no, 20, no. No, it's too much. Like, like 35, 35. That's quite a lot, like, international standards, right? In the UK, it's 7%. I think it's, uh, it's getting more popular in yeah. yeah. recent years. Yeah, in recent years. Like 2000 and up, uh, it's, it's getting more popular. But before, like, there was barely, like, mostly, like, four or five schools in the entire West. Yeah, but right now, like, more schools are opening than our private. But at the same time, yeah, exactly. Can you just... Uh, we're too loud. Can you just... <laughs> okay. So, uh, I would just like to add a couple of things regarding uh, reasons that... Things that lead to unemployment. So, one of the things that might be uh, in specific uh -oh. sectors in uh, specific countries, like mostly in developed countries, uh, might be outsourcing. It means that certain industries are sent to other countries because it's much cheaper to employ Vietnamese worker than English worker, for example. Uh, secondly, like usually economic crisis, right? Because in economic crisis, like people have less money to spend, like uh, the growth is slower. Uh, you need to. Uh, so you need to um, uh, fire some of the workers and things like that. Uh, and uh, generally, like uh, all the things that we that we heard uh, so far. Now, uh, regarding debates and uh, unemployment, what do you think? Uh, 
Sure. What do you think is usually trade-off regarding the... Uh, sorry, can you please finish all of um, What do you think is usually the trade-off between uh, regarding policies that uh, want to tackle unemployment? Um, yesterday we had uh, um, our debating training. It was about... Um, um, putting restrictions on uh, the migration of the young professions and um, I think that this has to do somehow to the subject of uh, unemployment mm -hmm. because um, you know, there was a claim that those young professionals are uh, an entrepreneurs sometimes so when they go outside to immigrate this, uh, you know, this helps to increase the unemployment in the country. So yeah, I mean, it helps. So, so yeah, this is the way how some countries, mostly in Eastern Europe, like say they have very low unemployment rates since I entered the EU, which is mostly the result of lots of people going to work to Germany, England, Sweden, etc. And I think like the Baltic countries for like two years like reduced unemployment something ridiculously low, like uh, like three percent or something. And like the most, the biggest reason was because. Lots of uh, workers who are unemployed just went to England or Germany to work. Yeah. A similar thing is uh, in, in many other countries. Yeah. But this is like mostly like uh, uh, this still doesn't mean that like it is good <laughs> to stay in those countries and to work, uh, or that uh, it, they, they have, or it doesn't mean uh, that there are good opportunities for people who are entering uh, entering workforce in those countries. Okay. Rather, they need either to leave or to compete for some very very scarce jobs. But yeah, isn't this one of the benefits of the EU? Yeah, it, I mean, uh, so it it is uh, beneficial. So I mean, it is all debatable, right? I mean, uh, I would say it is beneficial because it allows people to like uh, choose uh, like uh, where to work. They have many much more countries because, for example, if you're a citizen of any uh, EU country, you can work in any other EU country. They simply just go there and uh, uh, and work uh, and. Um, the thing is that uh, it is uh, it might be beneficial for those people. There are some uh, some issues with that. Uh, firstly, regarding the the brain drain, because lots of skilled and good workers leave some like uh, worse economies, go to better one. I think personally that that brain drain is to a large extent non-comparative, yeah. because even in Serbia, that is not part of the EU, and it's very difficult to need to obtain visa to go there. Lots of skilled people will spend like three months, uh, you know, feeling the bureaucratical, bureaucratical hell to get the visa and, and apply because they will work for a 10 times bigger wage in, in Germany than in Serbia. So even if there are so obstacles, it's not so easy to go, the skilled workers are, is someone who actually go. And I think it mostly benefi uh, benefits the lower skilled workers who, for whom it might be more difficult to work. Because even I think that even pe uh, people who voted for Brexit because of the immigration are fine with having Indian uh, good doctors, but they are not uh, happy with uh, plumbers and the other lower skilled workers that reduce uh, wages uh, uh, for uh, for local uh, population. Okay. This is the other side effect, which is the yeah. people in Western countries which have large immigration just feel their wages are being driven down. Yeah. They may or may not be right to some extent, although the effect is probably overstated. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like it just causes huge backlash, notably Trump and Brexit. Yeah, and it also depends from like uh, uh, I would say the number of migrants that then go and whether they uh, there are enough of migrants from the same country so they can make basically ghettos. Because for example, like. Uh, there is a huge Serbian uh, uh, diaspora uh, in Europe and generally, like uh, in the U.S. in, in the developed world. For example, like uh, in Vienna, there is 100,000 uh, Serbian people uh, living there. You can literally hear a couple of people working in supermarket talking to each other in Serbian. And uh, uh, there is a part of the city called Otakring where predominantly Serbs and Turks live. Uh, in this situation, there is a huge discrimination against Serbs within Austria because they are perceived as someone who is segregated and put in ghetto. In some other countries, when there is not so many of them and when they are generally dispersed, they don't uh, for, uh, have critical community, they usually integrate better and there is a little like problem with them. It might be with a problem with some other migrants or etc. So there are many factors how uh, migration of workers can... Inf uh, can uh, impact many things, and I think that there are many ways how we can sway that in debate from side to side. Um, now, one more thing that I would like to discuss regarding unemployment 
is that sometimes uh, uh, we mentioned already trade unions, right? This is the way to minimize the power disbalance between like uh, corporations and the workers, right? Because workers then collectively uh, fight for their rights. However, usually uh, the thing with the trade unions is because they fight for the members of the unions, for people who already have the job, to have uh, job security, to have wages that are not going to decline, uh, and to have a, a very, uh, if they are like got fired, they got good compensations and things like that. So usually, which means that it's very, very, if it is more difficult to fire a worker, it all usually means that it's also more difficult to also to hire a new one, right? Yes. So it means that like maybe the trade unions protect the workers that are already in the market, mm -hmm. but they might be, they usually are problematic for new workers who want to enter uh, the, free, uh, the, the, uh, the, the market. I think a good example for that is probably are probably teachers unions. Uh, for example, like um, in the United States, when generally uh, it is very, very difficult uh, to, to, to fire teachers. But not only that, they are also able to uh, influence certain educational policies because they are afraid that otherwise some of them might lose jobs, or etc. So for example, school choice is one of them that uh, would supposed to allow people to choose uh, public schools, not only in the area that they will live, but like simply to, uh, to travel somewhere. This is something that teachers unions usually uh, like are against, yeah. uh, because it means that basically uh, more of the children will go to the schools that are better off, which means that if you are a teacher uh, in a not so good schools, it might be that there will be not enough uh, students and therefore some of you might get fired or your classes reduced, etc. We can see that an example that uh, basically that existing workers are uh, harming, in this case, consumers, but also the new workers because like uh, uh, the wages are not uh, given according to the performances of teachers, but for example, uh, and therefore like uh, 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 there are no in uh, incentives to, uh, to be a very good, uh, I mean, uh, some of the in incentives to be good teachers uh, are not there. On the other hand, they're given of how long you are teaching there, which just benefits people. That's school. how it works here too. Yeah. yeah. So I guess Ilya and I both work in the public sector, um, so therefore neither of us has to work very hard, therefore here we are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it, it has some benefits, but maybe not for the people paying for, for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, should we move on? Yeah. Uh, so this is one of the... I think we can skip this motion for now, because we are already a bit... How do you feel about doing the motion discussion? Yeah. 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 So, okay, we have this house to abolish the minimum wage. Uh, so, I don't, uh, just to check whether we're on the same page, does anyone know what minimum wage is? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, basically, like the state tells you, like, you cannot be paid less than X amount of yeah. currency and therefore. So, uh, does anyone have any ideas why it would be good to abolish the minimum wage? Because yeah. everyone gets what they deserve. Okay. What else? Because the government knows that you need this X amount of money to survive, so that uh, big companies can give work with lesser money than that. Okay, that's the up argument. Let's see why we should abolish, why there should be no minimum wage. Okay. What are the arguments for not having a minimum wage? Um, uh, this would decrease the unemployment rate by having more work, more workers having the same wage that one worker one worker was taking yeah. previously. Um, furthermore, uh, decreasing the unemployment would mean that uh, the private sector uh, and uh, yeah, the private sector will have uh, more workers to, to be in, and instead of uh, what they're doing now of um, decree uh, of increasing, no. yeah, making less workers in the in the company, and these workers uh, these workers have too many things to do uh, with no efficiency to be in because of the pressure they are working under. Um, abolishing the minimum wage will uh, increase the number of the the workers, and this will mean uh, we have more efficiency because everyone will just work what he have to do. Um, uh, well, uh, but, okay, you know? Uh, I believe that uh, the boss is not like because the minimum 
the minimum work benefit that so many companies make their like their employees sign up a contract that they've taken the, the minimum wage whereas they didn't, which happens so much in private schools here in Palestine and so many other countries. So it's like avoiding the problem and not trying to solve the problem by putting a big so that's a big statement that doesn't work in the first place. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, uh, we, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. I guess it will decrease the productivity of people. So when they have the minimum wage, they just like, okay, why do I really need to work if the government will provide me like the, the wage that will cover my basic needs? So some people will like decrease in productivity and also. Yeah, but uh, like I think it's like still you can get fired or something yeah. if you're not to. I mean, especially there are there some workers who could do the job for you, especially for lower paid workers usually. Yeah. It is very, uh, there are lots of people who can do those jobs that are paid by minimum wage. Yeah, different jobs with different skill sets. It's the company's right to determine how much they will pay this person who does this job. Because a person who cleans isn't the same as a doctor. So it's the company's right to choose how, the amount of money they are going to give this person for his okay. job. So, so uh, uh, I think it's a very good point for, uh, to ask one question. So do you think it would be fair for a company to pay someone $5 to work a month? No. 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 So do you think that this would be a likely scenario if there is no minimum wage? No. 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 Because Why? Yeah. 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 People want work for it. So. People won't work with, but what else? What are the uh, other reasons? So, like, I'm not. Uh, so, uh, let me just. Sorry, let me just clarify what I want. So, like, obviously, like, uh, there is a just a second, there is a very low wage that uh, no one will work for, and it's completely undignified, and everyone just agrees that, like, uh, probably uh, there are some wages some should work for. But, however, still, like, if there is no minimum wage, probably we need to concede that some people will work less than the minimum wage. Now the question is like, what incentives have corporations when they set the, uh, the wages for for uh, for uh, like uh, low paid workers? Can we just uh, to have that in mind when we uh, when we analyze the motion? Sorry, uh, you had. Uh, uh, I want yeah. to, to say mm -hmm. that uh, one of the good things about not having a minimum wage, maybe uh, the the price of the the, the things get uh, good jobs because. Uh, it depends on the on the customer, and the customers will have like minimum, like they won't go towards the higher uh, the prices, so it will drop. And so maybe this is that's good. Is this good? Okay. Yeah, the prices will go down, so everyone can. It, it, the price yeah. will adapt with the <coughs> new minimum. Yeah, but, but but I mean, perhaps prices will go slight will be slightly cheaper for consumers. But on the other hand, some people will have much less disposable income, which yeah. might be unfair, but also might mean that a lot of people won't be able to participate in the economy because if you work for like 50 euros a month, it's very difficult for you to, you, you, uh, you spend less money simply and less money is in circulation, um, right? Yeah. Okay. I wanted to answer your question. Mm -hmm. So what's in the interest of companies? Yeah. First of all, when they set out the minimum wage, they want to set minimum like they want to set wages that they can afford to pay while at the same time profiting as much as they mm -hmm. can. That's first. Second, yeah. they set they set wages. Um, they consider uh, how would people accept the wage. Like for example, if they set the wage too low, that means nobody will work for you eventually, yeah. and your business will fail. So they have to take that into consideration. I think those are the two main factors. Yeah. Yes. Uh, excellent. Excellent. Uh, yeah, you have the, uh, sometimes if you have a good experience in uh, any field and you apply for a job and you had an interview uh, and you want to negotiate uh, the wage but if you know that uh, any other person can accept uh, the minimum wage and you lose your chance if you negotiate you will not negotiate and just accept what they offer you but if there is no minimum wage you can negotiate in a better uh, chance I'm not because this yeah. uh, gives the opportunity for many people uh, to just accept what uh, they offer. Yeah. Okay. I guess it's the, the, I think it's the opposite. Yeah, it is yeah. the opposite. Because here you cannot accept anything below 200 euros. Yeah. But now, if I know there is no minimum wage, and even if I if there is information asymmetry, I don't know uh, for how much money you would work. Yeah. If someone uh, offers me 150 and says there are many people who would work have this job for 100 euros. Of course, this is all simplification, yeah. but just to I mean, illustrate. Yeah. Then it just means I think that it's even worse for the workers in that. I mean, if I uh, think that I deserve more than the minimum wage, 
Yeah. Yeah, but like you're not bound to minimum wage. Minimum wage is just the guarantee that you get at least that, right? At least that, and you can get more of the minimum wage. You can get more than minimum wage, but not less. That's the minimum wage. But not less, exactly. But if there is no, then you can get any, like all money is. Um, what is the problem of the, the minimum wage that um, in recently all the companies the pri in, in the private sectors are giving like um, at nearly the minimum wage or the minimum wage to every like to, to every employ employee employee mm -hmm. okay. so, yeah, yeah. to every to every employee in the uh, in the company regardless what is their work or how many hours do they work mm -hmm. or things like this. So when there is no minimum wage, this doesn't mean um, to to give low uh, low the low salary. Yeah, low salary is low salary because you still have like laws to regulate uh, the the salary and the the work and the working hours thing, and you also have courts if you feel like uh, like you're being uh, your rights are being violated as. Uh, as, as a worker. So the thing I want to say is that having a minimum wage have uh, its uh, negatives because um, when engineers have the same uh, salary uh, with the secretary working in the same company, uh, regardless their work hours and regardless everything else, so it's not, um, it's not, uh, they don't necessarily have the same salary, they just have the minimum. That's it. No. Yeah, there is no difference between uh, me and the other worker. I mean, it's no, it's, the no, it's the minimum wage. It's quite, no, it's quite don't the opposite. Sorry, sorry, just uh, we can less. hear each other. Uh, so the minimum wage means that like everyone needs to pay, be paid at least that yeah, amount least. of money. Mm -hmm. And of course, like uh, people who are high skilled workers are paid much more. Yeah. Yeah. And like uh, what I think that. Um, Actually, the opposite uh, yeah. of what you're saying is true. Yeah, for example, when there, when you, if you raise the minimum wage, for example, from 10 to 12 dollars per hour in the United States, that means probably that maybe like for people who are paid by minimum wage, they need to pay more. But also like, for example, uh, people who are paid slightly above minimum wage are now not satisfied with this. They don't work, don't want to work for say, for example, if you're a, a chef and if you're a waiter, like waiter gets the minimum wage, chef gets a bit more. Then if the waiter has his uh, wager uh, above, yeah. uh, like rate, uh, rose, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> rise, increased, increased. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if the waiter has uh, his uh, uh, wage increased, then also the chef wants the wage increased oh, okay. uh, because of that. So everyone like uh, yeah. uh, demands uh, more money. And I, but I think you can s uh, spin that to our side. Say, look. Corporation wants to earn as much money, and like generally they care about profit, etc. But however, they are aware that uh, people's satisfaction is something that uh, will bring, like the worker satisfaction is something that will uh, make them better workers. If you are like not satisfied workers, probably you're not as productive. You uh, are not as invested in that uh, corporation. So you're doing bare the minimum as you want. So what I would say is that generally, like corporations have incentives to pay lots of workers at least decent wage or living yeah. wage because that's how they will be satisfied and as a consequence more productive. However, there are some situations in which they are not able to. And when state dictates the minimum wage, usually it is like a general, right? It creates the problem because firstly, they need to pay a lower like paid workers a lot more, which also creates another problem where they need to pay the other workers more, which means that they need to spend significantly more money on wages, which just decreases the productivity of all uh, of all company. Now, can we just uh, is that, uh, does it make sense for you, like yeah. uh, as a logic? Can we make some conclusions from this? Not just only like the company will be less profitable because okay. maybe we don't care. I mean, uh, for them as much as for workers who have more money, who are poorer. But how the, can we link this to workers to someone who is? Uh, yeah. yeah. We can see that if. If we pay the workers enough money, if the companies pay them enough money, the workers are less likely to unionize, and that's in the benefit of the company, because then it's, the workers make less fat for the company. The so, company. so if the uh, company pay them more, they are less likely to unionize, is that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, I guess that's if correct. companies also uh, like pay them more, there will be less workers, because 
if they need to pay a lot of people and they do not have the money, they will have to fire some to in order to pay others. Mm -hmm. So there will be more unemployment. Mm -hmm. And also it is much more expensive to employ another person, right? right. Because so like if someone can pay both Rafi and me like five dollars an hour and like we are not very satisfied with this but maybe we can work for two years with us and later like our wages will uh, be increased or something like that. However, if the minimum wage says uh, it is at least 10, uh, perhaps the uh, employer might just fire him or just gives him a, like some contract that's not beneficial, he might not be fully employed or myself. <laughs> uh, and then uh, it might be problematic because for a new worker it will be more difficult to enter the, the, the job because then uh, the one because uh, the price of a new worker is uh, fixed and it's a, a lot of money for, for a company. That means that uh, I'm going to do more job like uh, for a certain amount of uh, uh, of money, but for the other people it will be very very difficult to uh, to be employed, etc. Also, uh, who is who are people who are employed on minimum wage usually? Like for example, when any company wants to manufacture anything, they send it overseas to, to countries who have workshops. Now, if we have the, min the minimum wage, like if we do not have the, min the minimum wage, so many people are going to have workshops within their country. So many people will work for less than a dollar a day, which is going to be so bad for the people. Like if you want to be employed, you're going to get enough money to work like all day. It's going to be inhumane, and, but at the same time, the investments, the investments are going to be in the same country. Like it's an inhumane way, but it's an inhumane way that works, which is why most companies send their products overseas to be of manufactured. Yeah, but, but I think that so so I, I think that this logically makes a lot of sense. My, I think that uh, realistically, usually the reason why people outsource is because, like, uh, like I mean, if there were no minimum wage in the UK, probably people uh, would work for I don't know instead of ten pounds. Uh, uh, for eight pounds or something, but still they wouldn't do, uh, work as cheap as in China because, yeah. like, if you in, in, in like uh, or as in, as, as in Vietnam, in Vietnam, like for a couple of dollars a day, a lot of people that, that's like even better wage than yeah. the than the wage in like state-run enterprises, etc. Or even in Serbia, like it's not much better. So, like, it means that usually like outsourcing makes sense because. Uh, you, could, you cannot decrease that much wages in your country in order to get uh, so many workers to, to be able also, to do their job. Also yeah? the countries that uh, they export their, uh, their stuff to, to, you know, to be made have very low uh, living costs too. It's not as mm -hmm. inhumane yeah. in, in the normal scale. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. I agree. It's uh, depends from... Yeah, but, that way, um, there are some international institutions um, in, in different other countries that I've heard about um, where the, the employee gets get paid uh, according to his uh, 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 nationality. So uh, the Palestinian gets paid uh, uh, in, a, in a different way than uh, a, a, yes, another yeah. person from any uh, who yeah. have another. Yeah. another uh, but that's called outsourcing. National they're not in the same country. Yes, but That's, no. They're, they live in, same, in the yeah. same country, work in the same institute, but still get paid differently. For yeah, example, for yes. example yeah. like contract yes. citizens. Yes. And and you're you're the yeah. on we're not the minimum citizens. wage. So it would affect them not having the yeah. minimum wage, but I don't know yeah. it yeah. would yeah. affect them. Uh, yeah, I, I think th those things are like very problematic. But I think that like if state can have a minimum wage, if, if, if state has a political capital to impose a minimum wage, probably has political capital to enforce anti-discrimination laws. Because I think this is mostly issue with that rather than the, with with, uh, with the minimum wage. Because still, like even if we have minimum wage, we could pay uh, one nation for uh, by minimum wage and the other ten percent more. Like if you're not, uh, I don't think this is necessarily. Uh, uh, a link to that. I think it, it can be solved by other like mechanisms yeah. regarding anti-discrimination. And I think that we should think about also about the taxes and all of the stuff that the worker uh, have to pay. So I feel like without minimum wages, uh, the the workers uh, tends to like they're gonna be forced to work for lower uh, for lower wages. Uh, because they need to work, because there's taxes that they need to pay and rents and, uh, and all of the stuff. So I feel like having a minimum wage is like uh, a way of protection. 
so like at least at least they can afford their basic needs and they can uh, pay the taxes and all of the stuff that they have to yeah, yeah, pay for. Or those who are desperate and or poor or poor patients and yeah. would agree to be paid by business. Yeah. But I think when we abolish them, not all businesses and companies would actually decrease their wages very much and only be decreased maybe slightly because they don't want to lose their employees and obviously they don't, they don't want to hire people who are desperate or people who, who have no expertise because they would agree to the yeah. lower wages. Uh, and lots of times, those, uh, not only uh, like uh, apart from those people, it's usually like. Younger people, or students who work a part-time job, who can just simply like you know work for uh, six months in I don't know McDonald's to earn some money, to have some uh, experience, to put in CV or something like that. Like new workers are someone who is uh, like for young people, it's not a problem to work for a couple of months for something that's very very low. Even people like do volunteering, right? For yeah, yeah, yeah. for free, or like the unpaid internships where you just go but get coffee. Like on the long term, the long term, this would like, yeah. work for them. Yeah, yeah. But in the long term. Having a and that is the issue. Like the minimum, like people can like the wages. First, the like wages generally rise. If there is growth, and mo there is more growth, the companies uh, are more like flexible in employing people and also like in setting wages. But moreover, uh, like uh, people are working right now, maybe the lowest paid jobs. But in a couple of months, they might be like. Uh, maybe th they, they were like the lowest paid work at McDonald's. After a couple of months, maybe they will get a promotion, yeah. etc. So like it's not like the. Uh, that they are completely locked down. Yeah. If, uh, can you argue if you are if you are uh, on the opposition? Can you argue that the, those people who uh, would accept below minimum wages, who are desperate, who are very very poor, are already covered or uh, you know uh, granted some uh, some money by the government if they are social security or something? Yeah, I mean like that? that's true if there if there is a welfare state. Like is that is that a good argument? So, it is possible to set up a social model where you have minimum wages which are below the level you need to survive, and then the government gives you extra money to make up for your wage below. So we kind of have this in the UK, and the argument is that it's better for someone to be working, even if they're not being paid enough. So then you have a low minimum wage, so people are employed, and then you help them out because they can't afford to live on that money. So, so, so they work below the minimum wage and like the, the 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 government makes it up for or them? you set the minimum wage lower than you otherwise would and then the government makes up the difference between the minimum wage and the money you actually need to survive would it would it do that it's essentially what happens i think in quite a lot of countries yeah and in europe but for us not for like and for the circumstances of our country, this wouldn't happen. So That's why we need minimum wages. But earlier people said the minimum wage functioned as a de facto maximum wage, i.e. that everyone was paid the minimum wage, right? Was that, that was what you guys were saying. Yeah. Um, why did that happen? There is something that um, we already have a minimum wage, so everyone must stick to it at least, yeah, and to give it to the, to the employee. But what actually happens is that uh, in Palestine, we don't have uh, uh, like observation on what happens. So uh, there, uh, there is a huge percent of uh, employee who don't get the minimum wage in different uh, cities in Palestine. Yeah. And um, if they just report about it, there is nothing to be done. Like uh, people who work in uh, primary schools, uh, which are non-governmental schools, uh, like uh, people who work as uh, babysitters in uh, Hadana in kindergartens and uh, different uh, different things like this. So instead of and, and these people are um, are already wrong that they uh, that they have the right to get the minimum wage yeah. and they already know uh, that what happens to them is a violation of the law. So instead of just making the people who have uh, kindergartens or whatever uh, entrepreneur projects that they have and can't pay uh, the minimum wage to the people, make them violate the law, just. Uh, like um, abolish, abolish the, the minimum wage, and this what will happen. Yeah, your life will continue as it is. This is your uh, yeah. solution for it. No, it's not a solution. But it's if yeah, so I was in the the, uh, in a debate and I have to be with this Clear. sentence. Oh, okay. just have, uh, so uh, I get you, you, and then you, and then we can move uh, move on to. Uh, there are so many problems we have. Like she talked about the fraud when it comes to the minimum wage, which is, which is accurate. I can name so many institutions that do this thing where they're like. Okay, you're gonna get paid 
like minimum wage in Pakistan is like around 1,500 shekels. Mm -hmm. Like they pay their employees around 1,200 shekels. And like, okay, you sign up a contract and then you have no right to go and ask for this. Is that the real minimum wage? Yeah, yeah. it's, it's 1,450. Yeah. 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 So it's almost, it's almost as average wages. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so like, uh, so I don't get paid this much, but then when it comes to the taxes, their income, when it comes to taxes, yeah. they have to pay. When it comes to the welfare system, they don't qualify for the welfare system, they don't qualify to get donations, they have to pay a tax that they, like, as if they've gotten like 1,500 shekels, which is more than the percentage that they should be paying. So the minimum wage in this case is harming to them more than it's doing any good. Because like, it's putting so many responsibilities on them. It's putting so many things that they have to do. Like, and as she said, it's so widespread. Like, there is no kindergarten, there is no preschool that pays more than, like, a thousand shekels for their employees, and that's it. Yeah. So it can do more harm to these people who actually, who actually should be benefiting from the minimum, from the minimum wage yeah. than it does good. And these people are so desperate, and they want jobs. They have children. And as you know, in Palestine, we have really big families with, like, you know, one or two people who are working in the family, like, maximum. I might yeah, add so to harm these people. I might add that one restriction too that uh, in governmental institutes you can't work in two jobs yeah. Yeah. because of the minimum wage. So that well, that yeah. adds up. Because we're discussing a lot of information. Yeah. Like I'm getting lost on the actual like yeah. the actual workshop. Because like okay, I get everything and I get everything they discussed, but I don't know when to when should I say this and when should I say that? Because like yeah. it's all. Uh, we can maybe uh, do a bit recap. Just uh, there were like two more comments, like you yeah. and yeah. Uh, there's a question I want to ask: uh, If we abolish the minimum wage, uh, is that gonna affect the taxes and stuff like yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. That's a good question. Or not at all? I mean, I don't think it affects it to a large, large extent. I mean, what what would happen? Because to the uh, I mean, I mean, it depends from like situation how many. How many? Uh, I think it is more the issue of uh, the tax policy, rather than uh, like how high are the taxes and like. Uh, because I think uh, the minimum wage is designed for taxes and uh, yeah. basic needs for people. It should so if be. we abolish the minimum wage, may, how can we uh, put the taxes and? Uh, but, I mean, you can collect taxes on lower wages as well. Yeah. But taxes uh, is only a percentage, percentage of it. Like it doesn't affect anything if it's only individual. a percent of that. I, know, I mean, it will be like, probably it will be lower. I'm just I'm not sure to which extent it is lower. I mean, I'm not sure whether it is lower to that extent. I'm not sure whether it's lower to that extent that uh, it could make a significant impact in the base. Okay. And uh, uh, so I wanted to answer the question, what would happen if everyone got paid the minimum wage? Yes, we're basically, if we do this, we're basically implementing communism. And that's bad for so many reasons. For example, people will stop pursuing higher education because everyone is getting paid the same. Uh, people will start searching for easier jobs. No one would, be want, would want to be a doctor because to be a doctor, you need a minimum of 12 years. To work in a hotel, you can just go and apply and get work for the same wage as a doctor. Yeah, but that's also presumed that on the... That's also based on the presumption that people are working with the... Uh, uh, tall people are working with the minimum wage, which is... Why do you want to so maybe rush through yeah. everything else and yeah. then a bunch? Yeah, I think it's it makes sense. So infrastructure institutions, so the basic idea here is that you can't have effective uh, economy unless you have firstly good infrastructure and secondly good political institutions. Essentially for two very simple reasons. That if you can't get stuff around, get your workers around, or get your products around, um, then you can't make money as a company, you can't grow as an economy because it's just really expensive. You have to pull things around by river or take a long time on bad roads so the economy then can't grow properly. And the second one is that bad economic or political institutions impose a cost on your ability to do business because if you're in a corrupt society, you have to pay bribes. If you need a permit from both like the occupation authority and also the Palestinian authority, it costs more to get more permits. Or if your economy is overregulated, again, it's more expensive. Um, so it just adds costs to your ability to do business. 
So there's a book on this um, I would really recommend called Why Nations Fail. And the basic argument is that countries uh, which have good economic institutions, even if they don't have oil or other natural resources, the economy does well because people are able to thrive and succeed. You've got bad economic institutions, the economy does badly uh, because people are unable to like, create wealth and succeed and they give up and don't work very hard. Um, the other book on that which is good is called The Bottom Billion by Paul Collier, which is essentially about very, very poor societies in Africa. And, so the reason for their poverty is because they've got such poor economic institutions. Like both of these books are quite long, but they're really well written, and they also will be useful in both IR and economic space. So I really would recommend actually reading. What, what is the um, what's the second book? The, second the, the bottom, bottom billion. Bottom billion. So have any of you got Audible? Uh, you can get yeah, on Audible. Yeah, I have Audible. Yeah. So it's on Audible. It's good. Bottom billion.